So I've actually slightly tweaked this. Um, you can probably get rid of the words making and enjoy, because I've actually kind of changed how I'm giving the talk. Um, you'll see why as I go on. Um, but did anyone here, who was watching The Royal Wedding the other week? You watched it? Yeah, because I know billions of people around the world watched it. It was a fantastic event. I really loved it. Um, see, there's someone laughing down the front. It was a, it was a good show, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Um, but the one thing that I kind of took away from it and noticed was that the pastor, Michael Curry, was using an iPad when he was giving his talk. And I thought, if it's good enough for the royal wedding, it's good enough for me today. So that's why I've got this here to help me out as I progress without any slides, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to move fast. Take notes if you are involved in doing email. I'm going to try and share a lot of things that I have done that have had like a needle moving effect and some things that have zero effect at all. So take notes if you're into email. I'm going to try and share some things I've never sort of spoken about before, kind of secret source type things we've discovered. Um, so a lot of people, like when they look at what I do, which is send emails to 400,000 developers every single week, JavaScript, Ruby, all these different topics. Um, some people who don't know what I do say, are you a spammer? Like, you know, you send a lot of emails to people. And I'm like, no, I'm not. But there's only two letters that actually separate me from a spammer. And that is that spammers send unsolicited commercial email in bulk, and I send solicited commercial email in bulk. And this does mean that sometimes there are very similar challenges between the two kind of disciplines, if you will, um, in that we both send email kind of en masse and in bulk. Um, and we also have to deal with deliverability issues. And that's something that I particularly want to focus on today. So this isn't entirely about people enjoying the newsletter. It's about the fact that they even get it in the first place and actually are able to open it. Because being DevRel people, I kind of came to this assumption in the last week that you know how to like make things that developers are interested in. That's like your entire job. Um, so you can take that over to email. But what perhaps you don't know quite so much about is what things are you doing perhaps that you don't realize that may be affecting the deliverability of your emails. And that's something that, because I've been doing this for eight years, I actually have some opinions and kind of data and insights upon. Um, so let, I'm going to focus on a few things that work and then a few things that just have no impact at all, but people think they do. So what works? There's the best practices. It's the standard stuff. I'm not going to dwell on it. It's things like you know all the stuff we've um, going to regulations, GDPR, and having permission, and doing double opt-in, and not adding people to lists that they didn't sign up for in the first place. All that stuff is absolutely essential, and you know I very, very strongly recommend it. You're going to end up with spam reports and things like that, which is, you know once you start getting those on mass, you're going to run into trouble straight away. So please do stick with those things, and also. If you've got, um, maybe you're involved in sending email, maybe you've got technical people doing it, make sure that they're doing SPF, uh, domain keys, and also that you get a DMARC record for your domain. So these are all very technical terms. But essentially, they uh, stop people from kind of pretending to be you. And a lot of providers, including Gmail, see these technologies. And they're like, yes, like you know, if you're using that, you're more likely to make it through and less likely to end up in spam or even the promotions folder and things like that. Um, you also want to make sure that your from fields are really good and that you do uh, like address validation as well. So if people subscribe to your um, list and they put gmail.con and things like that, this is really, really common. And if you're able to clean that up, then great. Uh, there are services out there that will do that, but you can also, um, I think there's like a JavaScript plugin that will fix some of the most common misspellings as well. So if you've got control of a form on your site, it's well worth doing that. Um, you also want to make sure that everything is mobile friendly. Developers, I found, are actually less likely to read um, developer-related stuff on uh, mobile devices, but it's still important to get it right because that number is increasing. And I know it's over 50% for standard email like in the e-commerce world. Uh, it's not quite so high with developer stuff, but you still need to focus on that. So you need to make sure you've got a good, uh, good provider, you've got nice warm IPs, and that your email system is basically second to none. You're doing everything by the book. That's very important for keeping out of this promos folder. Um, and that's something that we focused on a lot. Like Every week when we send all of our newsletters, we actually set up a raw Gmail account that we send all of our emails to, and then we can see which box by default it falls into. Um, and it's worth creating these new, fold, uh, new kind of Gmail boxes every several months, because sometimes they will learn what you're doing by clicking on the mails and things, and they'll kind of rank your mails better. So create fresh ones, and then keep testing over time to see what occurs. Um, one, you know, there's a few different tricks that we've used. Um, one of them, and this is a slightly dirty trick, but actually makes 
good sense, is that we changed whether we mentioned the word unsubscribe. We made it to stop receiving a newsletter, leave a newsletter, all like different kind of terms that you can use for that because there are corporate email systems out there that will see the words unsubscribe in a mail and be like, right, that's an obviously commercial email. Let's throw it over to here. And the fact is we're delivering news. Like We're not delivering things that are commercial. We have sponsors in our newsletters, but I don't tend to think it as being commercial mail per se, because people signed up to get news about JavaScript, Ruby, whatever. And the fact that we've got a sponsor or two in there, you know, I don't think necessarily makes it completely commercial. Um, you do need to watch out with Google, though, because what gets you in the promos folder is kind of it's like a scoring process. Now, I don't have internal information on this, but for doing it for you know, several years and testing what's going on, it seems that it's not any one thing that will get you in there. Um, it's not a reputation even with your domain or your email address, but it's like if you just use bad words or you use like all caps too much or you put all caps with exclamation marks on the end, it's kind of like magnifying effect of like, you know, if you had a score that's, you know, a spam score, then it kind of looks, it kind of ranks up and ranks up. And once you pass this threshold, which varies on a per user basis, we've discovered, uh, it then pushes you into the different folders. So you need to really tone down a lot of things like exclamation marks and emojis everywhere, unless, you know, that's something that you've been doing for a long time and you've been staying in the primaries of doing that. Um, you also want to avoid linking to like really, really new domains. We've had people submit news from domains that are like one, two days old. That's going to guarantee like you're going to end up in the promos at least, but often in the spam as well. And we run all types of tests to make sure that, that doesn't occur. But whenever it's occurred, it's always because there's, there's been some sort of weird, uh, you know, someone's created an advent calendar, for example, and they've registered, I don't know, like rubyadventcalendar.christmas. It's a weird TLD to start with, and it's also only been registered for 24 hours. Like Gmail sees that and they freak out. Like they really hate that type of thing. So be careful with that type of thing. Um, you also want to check that you're not using too many numbers and kind of business names in the subject of your email. We've actually got emails out of the primary folder, uh, sorry, out of the promo folder and back into the primary just by dropping words like Microsoft and Uber and you know Salesforce and things like that, where they've been in headlines in the email, but then we've put them in the subject line and we just literally get rid of a word or two and it bumps it straight back into the, the primary folder again. It is that touchy. You really, really need to test. That's the one thing I want to get across. Um, so I'm going to quickly fly through some content that we've discovered really clicks with people. Obviously, we get tens of thousands of people click on all of our different links, and I keep track of all that data in aggregate so I know what works. I'm going to go very, very quickly due to time. Uh, roundups and best practice lists really, really do well. Um, Heroku did this with their Habits of a Happy Node Hacker each year, and that means we get to link to it each year as they update it. That's get tons of clicks. Um, Google does things like 12 best practices for account authentication. Like It sounds kind of boring, but people really love those kind of lists, especially when they come from sort of authoritative sources. Uh, people always love new features. You've got a new feature in your product, people are going to click on that. We get that all the time. Um, we had a Ruby 2.5 feature list. It got 21% CTR, uh, which is amazing. Um, brand new releases as well, like Postgres 10, all that type of stuff. Um, MongoDB releases, they always do well. Um, people always love comparisons. So our top link, I think, ever, we got 14,000 clicks. SitePen did a web framework comparison between React, Angular, and it was kind of like a roundup opinion piece. Um, those sort of things work really well. So if you're able to relate your products to other services in some way where you're not kind of like, you know, necessarily pushing them to competition, that can be a really good way to go as well. Um, and guides as well. So things like the modern JavaScript cheat sheet we linked to, um, it had 11,000 clicks recently. So another, you know, popular thing. Um, I've got a whole list of these and I'm going to take my notes and I'll make a screenshot and put them up somewhere on Twitter so you can see some of the other things that I've not had time to get into. Um, so as we get towards the end, I just want to focus on a couple of quick things. One is that if you do want to make things that people really enjoy and engage with, um, get in touch with Kathy Sierra's um, Badass Making Users Awesome book. It's an absolutely amazing book that really digs into how you can use different media to make your users become more awesome. And that's really what it's all about. It's not about just picking up your product or your service or the news in my case. It's about making them even better. Um, things that don't work very, very quickly. Subject lines, I found they have a minimal effect, 1%, 2% open rate, I don't care. Design to a point, we've changed the design, it almost has no effect ever. Sending on different dates and times, again, has no effect, just as long as you're consistent doing it at the same time each week. I've talked to people who do it on every single day of the week and they all do well. And last but not least, the other thing that doesn't really matter is you do not worry about the haters or people that are heckling you. The only people that matter are the people that you're kind of friends with and that you respect in the community. If they say you've, you've taken the wrong line, 
Listen to them. Uh, don't listen to people that hate you. One example we had was we had a guy reach out. He said, you don't disclose your ads in your newsletters. You suck, blah, 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 blah. And it was really, really, really like, nasty. And I imagine a lot of people would hate it and like, be very upset by it. Um, I read it. I've dealt with lots of these in the past. I said to him, I said, oh, what email client are you using? I can see the tags, blah, 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 blah. And I was very matter of fact and dry about it. And he emailed back the next day. He's like, I'm really, really sorry. He's like, I was drunk, stoned, and I received a ton of email today. And it made me really upset. And I just wanted to take it out on someone. This happens all the time. I deal with about 10 of these every year. So do not listen to those people. There's going to be some slightly odd people you'll run into, the one in a 1,000. If you've got more than a 1,000 people, they're going to be emailing you. And so from this one other crazy person, thank you very much. And if you want Q&A, follow me, Peter C. I'll answer any questions you've got. Thank you. Yeah.